Welcome to Seizing Valor, where we discover God's path for manhood, one conversation at a time. I'm Josh. I'm Zach. And I'm Joe. Josh, you're back. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey. Whoa. Thank goodness. Here, here I am. We, <laughs> You've entered Abbey Road. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Exactly. I know it was quite a, quite a week of vacation. I'm a little bit tanner, which is nice, but in the same token, it was not fun. <laughs> Lots, Which yeah, sucks so, for vacation. <laughs> as they said last week, we got the we got the <clears throat> the virus the beer bug. on the first day that we were there, and um, that was not not fun. So I had a quarantine. So we just we like went to a house. So we drove four hours to sit in a smaller house with less cleaning supplies in it for f- six days. And then we just drove back. <laughs> okay, back to our nicer house <laughs> where we normally live. <laughs> so did you, did you guys not find out that you had it till you were there? So my mother-in-law tested positive the day that everyone left. So then she ended up staying home with my father-in-law, which was kind of a bummer. Um, and then when we all showed up, we decided to test ourselves and all my kids had it. <laughs> <laughs> even though they were they, they but they have been sick because the thing about my kids is that this year is like they're just constantly is sick they're yeah. always sick like all the time which is so frustrating we're hoping that this is like the year that they get everything and then they're done i'm mm-hmm. hoping Super and praying system because it's been <laughs> awful like literally it'll be like a month of sickness and then like two weeks of healthy and then a month of sickness and then two weeks of healthy yeah and it's been that way since like pff, a year almost now it's been forever yeah it was horrible <laughs> absolutely horrible no sleeping the kids were atrocious because they were locked inside this house we tried to get out like we would go for walks and stuff was it like a beach that. house yeah it was a beach house but like every home you couldn't go there to like the vacation yeah, I mean, we could so we, we we'd go like early in the morning or like i would go out to fish in like the evenings um which i went a couple times didn't catch anything during but... quarantine hours <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh other than that it was it was terrible no, I'm just I'm really hoping that I mean I, I never have to experience something like that again. <laughs> but knowing my kids, who knows? You had to be the one that's like, it's gonna be all right, everyone. I'm healthy. I got yeah, this. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm gonna go fishing. So many tears. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> go to the beach. <laughs> Did you watch any movies? Did you watch any? Uh... Yeah, actually, uh, that was the only thing. I was smart and I brought my PlayStation. So we were able to like watch stuff and play games. So that's like all we did was just play video games and watch Bluey and all those kid shows. Anyways, how was your week? Let's stop talking about my awful, horrible, whatever. Let's Z- move on. Zachary, Zachary. <laughs> so my sister and her husband and their children came for 4th of July. So Saturday was actually probably like, I'll just talk about Saturday because that was kind of the big, the big to do day. So we, uh, we decided to, there's like a lake that's like an hour from here. Yes. That's like the closest lake to like where I live is an hour. So my, my brother-in-law's dad has a boat, which we're going to be taking to like our regular vacation destination in a few weeks. So we had to test it. So we took it to this lake. That's an hour away. Um, Just, and also just to, you know, be outside, get some sun um, and everything. So that was a good time. Got to put get the girls on the boat and, uh, you know, they had a really good time. Um, they were all like, oh, my gosh, they're having so much. I was like, oh, go faster, go faster. You know, they're they're loving it. Their hair is whipping everywhere. And then when it got to be my turn to drove the boat, they're like, Zach, you want to try? I'm like, sure. I haven't done this in a while. And all of a sudden the boat started kind of like malfunctioning. As soon as I started driving, what did you like, do? I didn't do, I didn't do anything. <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't press anything different, but it just so happens that at this moment is when the boat started like having a hiccup. It started like going like mm, stalling. And I'm like, I, I don't know what's <laughs> going on. So we had to, we had to take it back in. And the, the theory is that it might be like something in the gas or something from sitting so long in the off season or whatever. But uh, yeah, it just so happens that it was me. So I'm like, I'm not going to be driving this boat again, guys. I'm sorry. My, <laughs> my Midas touch. But then uh, that night, so I was telling Joe last week about how I'm trying to get involved with this young adult group that's in my church. Mm. Uh, and so we, they had our first, we had our first event on Saturday. 
which was a, a swing dancing night. Uh, some of us, at least, I remember, did this a little bit in college. There was the ballroom dancing, swing dancing, like lessons. Like, yeah, like, I remember. You know, I, I was just thinking that we all went to go swing dancing and other yeah, forms. Yeah, really popular. That, I remember the, as soon as Claire and I started dating, like when we were like officially boyfriend and girlfriend, we had like a super weekend where like we went to a concert and then that like Saturday. So the Friday we went to a concert, like a, a orchestra, a Philharmonic. Yeah. And that Saturday we went swing dancing. I didn't remember anything. It was, I, I, when I, when we were done, I remembered, I'm like, oh, this is the same stuff that we learned, but I had completely uh, gone Locked out the up. window in those, in those years. Um, so we took the hour and a half trip down there. Uh, and there wasn't a whole, we were late by like 30 minutes, which it was supposed to be like an hour lesson. And then like two and a half hours of dancing or something like that. Uh, we were late by 30 minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but luckily no one else was there or like no other new people had been, had shown up in that time. So the other people, the experienced people were just kind of hanging out. And so when we showed up, like they started the lesson when we got there, which we're like, oh, thank goodness. Because if we missed like 30 minutes of material and most of us don't really know what we're doing, it was going to be an interesting night. But God made it work out so that we uh, got the lesson. We got the abbreviated lesson. And uh, uh, let me tell you, a lot of us, I, I know I struggled a little bit with like the timing in the rhythm and making sure doing all the right things of like the box stepping and then the left and the right and like these triple steps and like all this stuff and they only got time to teach us like four moves or something like that um and yeah so there was a lot of a lot of time trying to figure out what i was doing um but one thing that kind of struck me is that like halfway through I uh, number well, like a few things helped me. Number one was I started being more assertive as like the guy in terms of like not like force it, but like in swing dancing, it, it, it's in dancing in general, it's like a cool phenomenon mm. that like each the man and the woman have like their respective responsibilities, mm. essentially, like that. Um, like the woman is actually the one who's doing all, all the fancy stuff. Everybody that's like, oh, wow, all those cool moves and everything like that. It's pretty much the woman's doing most of that stuff. All uh -huh. the twirls and the spins and the moving around, like all of that is the, the girls doing The graceful um, stuff. Yeah. Yes, but the guy's gotta be the one that kind of initiates that. Like uh -huh. you, you almost communicate what you want the girl to do by like, like pulling and pushing her arms in different ways to like make her do what she's supposed to do. And there's like certain signals to do certain moves uh and then you kind of guide the woman in order to do these things so it's interesting that there is that kind of relationship of you know like a guy's gotta you know you know take a stand stand firm be like you know be um not be wishy-washy like while he's dancing he's gotta like you know you you come up with the plan and you kind of like be firm and communicating and guiding right and then the woman is then like proceeds to you know do like her thing and like respond and do what she knows she's supposed to do in response and and make essentially both of you look good um they say that the point of dancing as a man is to make the woman stand out yeah, like so good. that you're you don't really have a job like you really don't have a job other than to guide her um and she's the one who's really supposed to be drawing all the attention and getting everything like That's a great way to anyway, put it anyway so yeah so it's like an interesting dynamic and when i became more firm instead of just being like a okay i do this and now you're supposed to respond like that i became more firm and like guiding more all the way through and like mm. trying like and it became a lot smoother that way there was like less confusion and it allowed the woman to dance more freely when i was being a little bit more firm and like how i was directing you know i know that christopher west he has like an awesome reflection on on dancing on dancing and how, like what you're saying like how it's it's really in line with who we are as men and women, like how we're supposed to be and the complementarity between us, how we're intended to kind of lead and then also to reveal the beauty and goodness of, of the woman. So mm -hmm. if yeah, anyone wants like to listen to more on that, Christopher West, he does an interview with Matt Fred on Pints of the Aquinas. Uh, amazing, <clears throat> really, really good. He talks about stuff like that. So yeah. my weekend uh, was fantastic. Uh, July 4th weekend, I spent the time with uh, the parents, the parentals units um did a little bit of shopping some barbecue with them um but the real kicker i was uh, teaching some summer school actually today was the first day but the, by the time this uh episode f will come out uh would have been a week basically um hopefully it's been smooth this first day was very smooth a lot of but still some hiccups but but the real kicker it's not even that uh my sister and i have been waiting to pull the plug 
on getting a new laptop because this is the one that I've been, this current laptop that you see right here, you don't really see. We don't really see, see it, but you, you get the idea. idea. <laughs> but yeah, you get the idea that I see right here is the one that I use all the way bachelor's degree for college. Uh, so it's nine years old. Uh, my sister, she upgraded around like 2016 or whatever. Uh, both MacBook Pros and this thing, I'm ready to like smash it. Oh my goodness. Um, Do it right now. Do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> but we're both going to pull the plug and get the new one. This is my first, what I'm on now is a MacBook and it's the first one I ever owned. And it like opened the whole world to me and mm -hmm. I've never used Mac before. So it's, it's kind of cool. So I'm, I'm, I'm not all the way in yet, but I, I do really respect it and appreciate yeah. it. So we are going to be talking about quitting. And for those listening, I'm guessing this is more in the vein of, of not quitting or trying not to quit or struggles with quitting and not us trying to promote you quitting. Or are we going the opposite way of quitting bad stuff? Well, unless it's like a bad situation. Like, yeah. <laughs> Well, we'll find I will out. say, uh, I think, I think we're going to, it's good that I'm here because I've quit a lot of things in my life. <laughs> so I'll, Ooh, I'm going to play good, experience. like devil's advocate in some of our discussions, I think. So this is good. Yeah. So I'll, I'll actually start off kind of what things people do quit. You know, uh, we've got jobs. Some people quit technically marriage. Sometimes even pe parents quit their children. Sometimes children quit their parents, quits yeah. faith. What else? Uh, I mean, just even themselves, like personal decisions and values, goals, you know, desires that they have, longings, yeah. dream, dreams. I mean, everything you can quit. Like, <laughs> this is a shame. Yeah. But I'm going to quit yeah. this. Bye, guys. Okay. See you later. <laughs> Bye, guys. This is a short <laughs> episode. <laughs> So now we're going to talk about how Joe just quit and how that's terrible. <laughs> well, He's the Joe worst. Quits, I quit. So, uh, I guess it's just me now. <laughs> it becomes our most viral video. Se seizing Zach. <laughs> and it's just me holding out, trying not to quit. <laughs> so they left me with this. There they left go. me with this podcast all by myself. Well, I don't know what to do. In a couple verses that um we're on my heart um we have james chapter 1 uh mm -hmm. verse 12 that says blesses the man that endures temptation james chapter 5 verse 11 says behold we count them happy which endure that word endure and then we also have lastly matthew chapter 24 verse 13 but he that endures again the theme of endures you kind of get where i'm going here but he that endures unto the end the same shall be saved now the bible teaches us to endure these hard times these difficulties these temptations to quit obviously there are situations which we just said that are healthy to quit what what are what are things you think pe cause people to quit like what, yeah. what are the motivators of people quitting things that are good for them mm -hmm. or quitting things they're pursuing that could be good for them, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like maybe we should talk about that. Like what, why do we think in our culture, people, people quit stuff? I feel like comfort is like number one for mm -hmm. a lot of individuals. Um, I know just me and my own personal life. Like if, if I am in a place of comfort, it's very difficult for me to leave. And so if I were to get a job that would put me in places where I'm uncomfortable, I would want to quit like immediately. Yeah. I mean, I think it goes along with comfort, but I think the, also the idea of challenge or things getting difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people give up just when things don't come naturally or things go sideways or things become challenging or hard or difficult, or, you know, they don't go exactly the way people expect them to go. I know, you know, in just general things like even sports as kids, that's like a lot, like when things get hard or when you have to like buckle down and, or things don't come naturally, like that's when like kids quit a lot of the time. And even then that transfers into adult life too. You know, mm -hmm. we quit um, for those reasons of, of facing hardship. Um, but at the same time, usually I think most people will attest that most things worth doing are challenging. Yeah. And, you know, you have to, not saying that every, hill is one you need to climb over but like the idea is most of the time unless you have a hill to climb over you're probably not going to be near as satisfied mm. um but it still doesn't make it any easier to climb over it yeah uh, so i think that's what also discourages a lot of people is in our day and age people aren't willing to get past 
the challenge. I know that's my big thing all the time is when I feel like I'm encountering too much challenge, then sometimes I'll be more apt to have to quit because I'll, yeah. I'll feel like, oh, if it's not coming super easy, I'm, or as easily, I'm maybe I'm not supposed to be doing it type mm -hmm. of thing or mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But the idea is like challenges also, as Josh said, it's the thing when you are challenged, you are not comfortable. So that's, yeah. that's kind of in the same vein. I was recently listening to, you know, before there were podcasts, uh, there were these things called CDs. Uh, yeah. And I was listening to one by a Dr. Tim Gray today, actually, that was on the virtue of masculinity. Mm. Um, and I won't go into all the details about what he was talking about. Um, but he said one of the like the the counter um, points to like masculinity or one of the things in, that of non masculinity right now or in our non masculine culture is that we idolize comfort yeah. or we or that idea um, and that we don't and that quitting is one of those things like we don't we shy away from work we shy away from hard labor we shy away from discomfort uh, so that's like the sign of a culture that idolizes or that has become emasculated um he talks about the virtue of ma magnanimity magnanimity mm -hmm. which is this idea of putting all of yourself into something uh regardless of the result so even if you think you're going to fail or even if it's challenging or hard you like put your whole self into it and you go head on mm -hmm. in there magnanimity being like you want to be like uh, i think it means like big soul or something yeah. like that so like you want to be you want to be big in, in whatever you're doing. You want to go all in and not hold back. Mm -hmm. He talks an example about like his son, like, you know, he's playing, you know, in a baseball game and uh, he had um, an opportunity or a chance where like they were down by like a few runs and then like the bases were loaded and he was the guy who was up, but the, his son hates to strike out and he like got two strikes. Um, and then he was scared that his son was not going to be magnanimous in the moment and, and freeze up because he's, you know, afraid of striking out, afraid mm. of failure, and then just kind of freeze up, mm. but he still swung and went for it anyway. And in that way, he still, he, he got a double and they won the game and everything. But like that idea is that he went for it, even though he could have failed. So like this idea, um, I know that's also some people might quit before they even start. Right. Because they, because they think they're going to fail anyway. So, mm. um, yeah. So thought that was applicable. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I'd, uh, I'd say that I'm I have a lot of experience with this in this world. Uh, I'm kind of a product of that, and I've been seeing that a lot, especially since I have been unemployed. That like the desire for comfort is like really really powerful, and like that temptation to like go back to this almost like an equilibrium of like I don't want to do anything that's challenging. Mm -hmm. It can really be a barrier to everything, mm -hmm. every part of of your life so so I, I feel that i feel that and i'm kind of living through that currently so i i have a personal I have a leg in this <laughs> a dog in this fight <laughs> what are you doing what are you doing to combat it so i i try to like well just to push myself to get myself out there like i know for not for for me like i don't struggle with, with like labor like work in that sense of like physical labor so mm -hmm. i you know I'll, i go out and i do yard work that's like strenuous and i have chainsaws and cut things down like whatever like I do that stuff really well but for me it's like like the, a career and like jobs no man I totally I totally get it I like totally get where you're at because I feel very much in the same place obviously I just quit my job and even though like I'm for the most part going towards law school I mean I still face my doubts and go back and forth as to whether or not that's going to be the thing I want to do and do I really want to do it and like because it's a really hard thing and then I get intimidated by that and like but this idea of like a lot of my life too, I've not always felt fully, you know, fulfilled by my job or whatever. And there's that level of comfort and yeah, it's I, about like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's it. That's it right there. And the, just the fact for me, it's like, I've tried to put all of my eggs in a basket, so to speak, like where I try to seek fulfillment from the jobs that I'm working. And then whenever it falls short of like this, all oh, like my perfect self, is working at Guitar Center, or my perfect self is working as a youth minister, or my perfect self is being a mu music producer, guitar teacher of every other 15 jobs on my resume, yeah. like all of those things. And whenever I find that it doesn't fulfill me, it doesn't complete me as a person, I leave. And I'm like, oh, this isn't for me. There's something else out there. And so what I have learned is that the reality that like jobs, they're not really intent to fill you because that hole is meant, is meant for God and it's meant right. to, for, mm. for like a, it's a spiritual void, right? Mm. And so us as men, for me, especially, like I've, I've set, I pull a lot of value from my work 
And whenever it doesn't like satisfy me, because it can't, because it's impossible for that to satisfy me, I get disappointed mm-hmm. and I want to leave. And so that's kind of the barrier that I'm seeking, right? Like I'm, I'm dealing with is like getting another job, but then trying to put all of myself in, but then trying not to pull God out of it yes. to satisfy mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah. that's, that's kind of where I'm at with, with this journey. Mm-hmm. I think there's a difference in what you're saying, Josh, about um, putting our whole selves into like, as in like putting our whole effort into something versus like putting our whole selves as like thinking this job's going to, as you said, like, you I don't want to call it like being an idol or whatever, but like this idea of trying to find well, fulfillment almost, that's meant I mean, for God. Yeah. 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 In, in a sense, so, because, because it is like that. It's like, I'm trying to, to like be, complete almost and mm-hmm. to, to turn that to something that can't complete me yeah you know? yeah. yeah it's trial and error because uh when i was figuring out like what job that i wanted next about two years ago i was like on my knees and i was begging and begging and begging like how do i get out of this situation because there were a bunch of other things that were affecting me at that point in time that i don't want to get into right now but as far as the job goes so that was like the crux of it because i tried to put all my eggs into one basket but i had to you know set aside uh, my own pride and just like ask for guidance on this process and for guidance on the next job that I wanted to. And for, for lack of a better way of saying it, I'm kind of like in the same situation where I'm like, okay, like now I'm in this really good thing. It's been good for a while. And then, um, getting kind of disappointed because like, it's not all it's cracked up to be because you want to like stay in that comforted position. Am I making sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think too, is this idea is, obviously, once again, we don't want our jobs to be our idols and our true source of fulfillment. But this idea that we still have to give our whole selves into them, because I don't think as men, we'll ever be satisfied unless we give everything we have into it. Like, I think there's that almost like a a contradiction in itself, but not well, I mean, once again, effort and seeking, like, spiritual fill filling is like, I think a little different. Yeah, because if we realize we're doing the job for God, kind of, and we give our whole effort, I think that that helps yeah but this idea is i know i struggle sometimes is that in the past i haven't given 100 percent into jobs mm-hmm. um because it's for one reason or another of just like it might not have been my primary focus i was doing it for the sake of something else i just didn't like this aspect of the job i was af- afraid of failing at that particular portion um that i just didn't give 100 percent. i just gave what i thought was good enough and just kind of left it at that and Mm -hmm. like good enough is good enough and i i didn't strive to like push myself to to the to the breaking point it wasn't like in athletics where i used to you know be able to do that where i was push myself to the breaking point to be better i wasn't putting that same motivation into my work which i know and i was feeling very unsatisfied because I, i i wasn't i wasn't doing that like i wasn't pushing myself to the breaking point probably mostly out of the fear of failure yeah um but I don't necessarily think as men will be satisfied in some ways until we get to that point where we fail or we've pushed ourselves as far as we can. And then we fail. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, that's where we find God. And second, like, I just think we just knowing we have something else, I think dissatisfies us and makes us sad. I think for me, what I've, I don't, and I don't want to like pull this down or anything. I think this, this, the, the, the even the concept of satisfaction in employment i think is something that just i mean you can you can get levels of it right where mm-hmm. like oh like i've achieved what i've set out but the same token it's like it's like our human reality but you know just our nature from being a holland a holland a fallen creature is that like satisfaction is only in god like we're mm-hmm. only going to be mm-hmm. truly satisfied in god in, in e- eternity right and so like sure like satisfaction is a hard word because it's like, oh, like I did it, you know, I, I ate and I'm full and I'm I set and I'm good. But the thing is, is you get hungry again, you get thirsty again. Yeah. And so I think that's, that's a hard word with, with stuff like this, because like, like, because what I'm hearing is like, I've been trying to be satisfied, but in the same token, it's like, I now know that like, it's not possible. And so I, I think it's important. You should always give all of your effort, but to, but for the like, goal of satisfaction is is not right it should be for other purposes Mm. other goals other ends other than just satisfaction i love that you brought that up um back in 2014 uh when we were still in college um 
before this guy actually became a meme uh the meme is uh yeah they started in the first half not gonna lie yeah they had us the first half i'm not gonna lie I, that guy um that guy <laughs> you know what i'm talking about he said something that was like incredibly profound he was like senior quarterback or something for like a high school team he was saying yeah we like we start off slow but at the next time we're going to keep going fast and we're always always going to finish fast and at the end of the day if we're not actually uh getting to where we want to that's all right you know we continue to give like, god the glory and you know that it's going to pay off and if it doesn't pay off you continue to give god the glory if you still lose the game you continue to get each other's back and that and that's what we realized because ultimately he is the um, one that we are satisfied in. Maybe satisfied. So maybe Josh brings up a good point. Maybe like satisfied is not necessarily the proper term. Um, maybe it's more like what I'm trying to go for is maybe more like purposeful or yeah. like that idea is like you're, you're, you're striving towards something or like you're doing something or you like, you have like, even if it's not your ultimate purpose, like, cause all of our ultimate purpose is to go towards God and be with God and bring others to God and that type of thing. But even just in the moment from a day to day of like having having purpose um and like and not necessarily direction, a complete right? total yeah direction direction, direction. direction. that's yeah. yeah not feeling aimless or anything right. like or purposeless and i think once again we um and and um like work in itself is a, is a holy thing like work god you know created labor and everything like that and yes there's a connotation to it is it's a little bit of the toil of labor is like a punishment of original sin but the idea is that there's there's um salvation in in work or there's a i don't remember what the exact word is but like god gives purpose to to work and like to to labor and to um and that we we glorify him when we give our best in our in our job even if we don't like even if it's not our ultimate purpose like we do we do glorify god when we give it our all Mm. um so yeah that's 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 maybe more along the lines of of uh, what I was aiming for, and that we can feel sad. Because I know, like in sports, I used to be like, it's like, oh God, like I'm stepping up for this race, regardless of if I get first or last or whatever, I get a good time or a bad time. Like, help me just to give everything I've got. And if I do, if I if I get out of the pool and I feel like I can't move, then I'll I'll feel like I I I gave you everything I had, like yeah. I gave it all to you. And regardless of what the result ended up being, I feel like it's a little harder for me to gauge that in the real world. Like in swimming, it was like, oh, if I can barely stand, like when I get out of the pool, then yeah, I did everything. Yeah. But now in, in in a less physical sense, when you're doing like actual work, which most work for us in America these days is not physical labor. Like most of us have jobs that are, you know, more office based or more sedentary. And so it's really sometimes hard to gauge more of like, did I give it everything? Did mm-hmm. I give it all I had? So that's just, I guess I struggle with that too. It's just knowing like when I gave it my best effort, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's great. I think one podcast we should talk about like the nature of work and the nature of like how we were meant for the fields, you know, as opposed Mm -hmm. to concrete walls, like that might be a topic. And, and the uh, cubicle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have I, you guys I ever felt, seen the, the felty walls? <laughs> yeah, the Hang felty on, walls. I'll transfer your call. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you guys ever seen Falling Down before? Joe, have you seen that movie? I want to see that. I know exactly. Yep. That's I a, know, I know, a powerful I know. movie. So we should, yeah. we could talk about that. And like, the, it's just a man who like lives that life and he's, he just, he just loses it. Like he's had enough. In and corporate that, America. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's like what happens, you know, just cause we're not made for that. But, but yeah, yeah, definitely. Like we need, we need direction. We need purpose. Cause that's like what, Cause then like, what's the, what, what is life about if it's not just to, to, to have, a, you know, a purpose and a goal mm-hmm. and, and direction. Um, yeah. So yeah. 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 And even kind of jumping on top of that, like there's always gotta be like a deeper reason that we're um, that we work. Like, I mean, working can like, we can't just, we all can't survive just working to, rest if that makes sense if we're working to play or working we're to working leisure. for that weekend like, yeah yeah if all we're doing is we're working so that we can have well if like so like a sole single person who all they're doing is working so that they can have a good time when they're not working is not going to be a satisfactory life um this idea is like like for example josh you work for your family to sustain your family to feed your family that doesn't mean you and your family can't go and have fun and have good times but like there's purpose to that in you know the fact that you guys are bonding and like you know uh there's a purpose for that in your family whereas 
um you know sometimes when you're like single like not saying that you can't find fulfillment in, in singlehood but like you've got to find a purpose other than just leisure um in which to work because when work gets hard then you quit because right. there's not a deeper a deeper reason so like whether that's your work is helping make a difference in the world or you feel like it's something god's called you to do or or whatever like i mean i even you even see i've even read like professional athlete biographies for example whereas like they felt like what they were doing didn't have meaning like except for them but then as soon as they found like a separate reason to do it like whether it's a foundation to help someone or something like that, they found like new energy to do what they were supposed to do mm. because it's like having another reason than just ourselves is, is important. I think to not quitting. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I think we're kind of living in a, in a time where that those reasons are getting harder and harder for people to um, pinpoint. Yeah. Pinpoint. Yeah. So I think, I think, we're living in a time where, where people tend to be a little bit more selfish and more self-centered, kind of more egocentric. And so because of that, I think is why we're seeing things like, you know, the great resignation, why we're seeing people really want to take care of themselves. And so they'll quit their job, regardless of what it is in corporate America or, or whatever, um, because it's harder for them to kind of see those reasons like outside of, I'm working here. I don't like it. I'm going to leave as opposed to like, like what we're saying here. So that, that's something definitely that the listener and, you know, for all of us, we should really reflect on is like, you're, we're, we all have to work. <laughs> and, and sometimes we're in places that are difficult and it's hard to get through. And maybe you just need to look at it through a different lens and try to get a reason for, for your working mm -hmm. as opposed to just abandoning ship. And I'm speaking to myself here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, no, know, here I, you know, I'm in yeah. the same boat. Yeah, so, definitely. But um, yeah, yeah. This is a big topic. Oh, it is a big this topic. Is, and there's more than Dell. We say that about every topic. <laughs> every topic is huge. Stay tuned. Uh, uh, I, I wish we had more time to talk about like relationships and marriage and by quitting all of that stuff too. that's but what content we, is about baby maybe we can yeah we can save that for a different time do we, do we want to do like a quitting part two just for the next episode or yeah because i feel like we like the relationship yeah. end we didn't really talk about like how everyone just gives up on every relationship on relationship dude that's such a great thing and talking about like the what i like to call the sunk cost fallacy how to stay and yeah and staying in so we, what we invite you all to do right now is please email us at seizingvalor at gmail.com. Any questions or comments or prayer intentions, whether they be public or private, we can share what, uh, totally to your discretion. Uh, we invite you all to share this podcast with any person that you think it might help, uh, especially with this concept of quitting. It's a very deep topic and uh, very helpful one for us, but also could be helpful for anybody who's listening. Um, we are on Spotify. We are not on any other platform other than Spotify and YouTube at this moment in time could be different in the future uh but we are also at seizing valor at seizing valor on, on instagram uh we encourage you to follow us on other social platforms do the closing prayer zach why don't you do it all right okay heavenly father thank you for bringing us all here today the three of us um as well as anyone who is listening um Quitting is, is a difficult thing in many of our lives, Lord. It's, uh, it's easy to quit. It's hard to endure, um, especially with the, the things in our lives that are, that are worth it. Um, but help us to remember that, you know, the challenge is kind of partly what indicates that something's worth it, that most things in life that are easy are um, not as, as fulfilling or not as um, beneficial to us as the things that are hard. Um, and that you are there in that challenge and you are there with us, um, helping us to get over the finish line. Um, help us to not give up on ourselves. Help us not to give up on others. Uh, help us not to give up on our, our missions and our purposes and our callings. Um, and most importantly, help us to never give up on you. Even if we give up on all these other things, help us to never give up on you. Um, help us to never quit on you uh, because help us always to remember that you never quit on us. Uh, even though I'm sure we are extremely difficult and extremely challenging, but according to you, we're worth it, I suppose. So help us to be like you and to, to persevere. Um, and just help us to, to find meaning, uh, help us to find purpose 
uh, in, in what it is we do in our lives, but ultimately remember that true satisfaction, true joy, true peace comes from you and you alone. Um, yeah. And in Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much for tuning in and we'll see you next week.